This story began in the 1970s. An oil crisis prompted India to rethink its energy strategies. They needed alternatives. And this sparked an interest in wind energy development in the 80s. Now, let's fast forward to the 90s. The government introduced tax incentives, prompting many companies to enter the wind energy business and marking the start of large-scale wind power generation in the country. Typically, wind turbines can reach heights ranging from 60 meters to 140 meters and consists of the tower. A taller tower captures more wind energy. Blades to spin and turn the shafts and generator. And the nacelle, which contains the gearbox and generator. It acts like the brain of the wind turbine. A small amount of electricity triggers the blades to spin. The shaft turns the generator and produces electricity. The amount of current produced depends on the size of the wind turbine's overall structure, including the generator size. The current is directed to the ground, sent to a transformer, and eventually to the primary power grid. Wind turbines can be installed onshore or offshore. India's first wind farms were set up in the coastal areas of Gujarat, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu back in the mid-80s. The velocity of winds in these areas are very high, largely due to their geographic positions. The towns of Mupandal and Aralvai Muli in Tamil Nadu where most wind turbines are located, are flanked by the Western Ghats mountain range. When the Arabian sea winds pass through, they are blocked by the mountains and forced up, resulting in a strong breeze on the sheltered side and where the wind farms are located. Currently, the largest onshore wind farm in India is Mupandal, with more than 3,000 wind turbines. The farm generates an approximate 1,500 megawatts of electricity. That's enough to power over 1 million homes daily. And all that electricity is distributed by the state-owned utilities provider, Tamil Nadu Electricity Board. While wind power is a clean and renewable energy source, there have been concerns with its impact to the ecosystem. Biodiversity is basically all living organisms. It can range from your plants to birds to insects to reptiles to mammals. Apart from that, you have ecosystems diversity. Every movement that we make is connected to something else. And so effectively, when one species dies out in a location, it triggers a number of other cascading effects, which will sort of make the other species die out from the location and the next one and the next one. Here we have a carcass. As you can see, the feathers are scattered, so it could be you know, within a time frame of a month, so you don't have parts of the body left anymore, but only chunks of the feathers. So this is a raptor. Raptors are more prone to sort of getting hit by the turbines because you know, they're mostly using the warm air to get the lift and things like that. The windmill has become the mega predator, playing the role of birds that feed on other birds. Ecologists like Hopeland conduct field research to understand the impact of wind turbines on bird populations in Mupandal. He hopes such studies will help in formulating mitigation measures and contribute to the sustainable development of wind energy. A corridor needs to be maintained for them, for example. Then, can we come up with a policy that optimizes both conserving the birds, uh, providing them a safe passage during the migratory period, and meeting our energy targets? According to the Global Wind Energy Council, wind energy is one of the fastest growing sources of renewable energy. In 2023, a total of 117 gigawatts of new wind power capacity was installed worldwide. This is equivalent to providing enough energy to power 90 million average homes for a year, marking a 50% increase from the previous year. 
the global cumulative wind power capacity now totals 1,021 gigawatts. That's roughly equivalent to 8.4 billion standard LED light bulbs and the combined electricity generation of over 780 large coal-fired power plants. In 2022, India had more than 40,000 wind turbine installations throughout the country and ranks fourth globally after China, the United States and Germany and has positioned itself as a global leader in renewable energy adoption. And across Asia, more countries such as Japan, Vietnam, South Korea, Thailand and the Philippines have been actively investing in wind energy projects. Largely driven by government policies favoring renewable energy and advancements in wind turbine technology which enable cost effectiveness. These efforts aim to meet their energy needs while addressing environmental challenges.